see what we're doing here with Booba Fett is it seems like from the perspective of everybody in the Empire, you know, there's a single Booba Fett. But instead, it's two sisters. And so it's not really revealed to the audience or... Because all you see is perspective is everybody c congratulating Booba Fett for another victory, you know. Uh, rescuing space, sexy space colonists going past, you nah, know. Just the orphans, they're all dead. The, yeah, just the orphans, who cares, you know. More titty milk for the orphans, you know. But the point is, then, you know, it turns out, uh, you know, that... you Because we're going to have a stunt woman whose titties, like, you know, are extra firm through, you know, her lymph system, through her kidneys, all that functioning. So when she gets athletically aroused, then her tits get firm and she, you know, jumps around, they boing boing, you know, in her armor. Then you have the other Booba Fett where she's porn star mode and her tits get extra big when she's, you know, doing her sex stuff. So then it's like... For no reason, you pr you just introduce the athletic woman like she just comes in season two or second movie or whatever, fully you know. So then she can be part of the big booby action, you know. And at first she's just is the action. Then you know you add in the sex with her later as she yeah, wants to do the it. The point is, that it's a stuntman joke. Yeah, that the stunt woman is her sister. Uh, and she just sends her to do yeah, stuff because but she's she, taking uh, the she credit. only she's only you know the tactician. Yeah, because they're the two sis the twin sisters are not really twin, but you know yeah. just just from birth, not the way they look. Yeah, their faces can be completely different. Because it's about the boobs being yeah. huge in size, so then they're supposedly twins. Isn't yeah, it? exactly. Wow, I know this is really deep, but I think we got you hooked. <laughs> you know the actor for uh, who did the Hannibal Lecter thing? You know he was cooking his meats, you know, all sinister at the beginning of his TV show episodes. Well, we need to do the reverse of that, where Booba Fett, you know, at the beginning of, of I don't know, the first episode? or Hell yeah. Beginning of the movie. I don't give a crap. It's just, you know, her going through the process of making her titty milk that's extra thick into cheese, and then it's like squeezing it through the cloth, you know, and all that different steps you do to separate the different content of fat and stuff. And just all the steps as light comes in through like hanging exotic looking, you know, alien flowers, you know, through big windows and everything. And it's all nice and cheery. Yeah. And then you got to have the shot of her, you know, dripping boobs as they're on the side of the sink as, uh, yeah. you know, she, she wipes them a little bit as she's, uh, you know, squeezing the bag of cheese with the golden yeah. sunlight coming through all the flowers and hitting them with different colors because some of the leaves are, you know, taking the tint of the sun and making different, like, reds and blues and stuff all over her boobs as she's, like, you know, sort of like a stained glass window effect around them as if they're, yeah, like, you know, yeah. holding, exactly, you know, yeah. added some Disney birds chirping. No, that's too far. Don't do that. <laughs> No, it's, I don't, Disney, these nuts, I don't know. We don't need Disney feels all the time. That's I was all making I a joke for yeah. describing breasts. Yeah, then later on, um, she's, you know, feeding her niece, like, some tasty, like, alien-looking noodles that are just different colors and strands, and then there's, like, her booby cheese in it, you know? Yeah. Gotta have your mac and cheese. I think it's about it. Alright, you know, the opening scene, so she's got the helmet on. And the reason why is because not only does it build the mystery of what she looks like, but then you can have the shot like as though it's from her perspective in the visor with her breath fogging it up slightly. And then it's, you know, scanning her boobs, you know. It's advanced technology. So it's taking a look at her memories and, like, seeing the how the ducks of milk work and everything so she can better manage her titties, you know, and make sure that they stay healthy while she do, does her thing. All right, Booba Fett is in the middle of the <laughs> worldwide county fair, you know, <laughs> with the with the bosom buckets, you know, make sure and it all sets up right. Then she gets the call that the, you know, exotic uh, orchid flower greenhouses are being invaded by giant scarably beetle type insects, but like, like cuter. So then like she rushes over there real quick because like, you know, she's got to like help, you know, get rid of the insects. 
So when she goes in there, you know, they like jump up, you know, and they like their pincers squeeze her titties and titty milk flies everywhere. <laughs> and it's really erotic, but everybody laughs instead. Yes, it's it's, it's funny, funny too. It's funny too. Splats all over the camera, you know. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, so we need to have a movie premise, at least part of a movie. Could be an entire movie. It's good, pretty good content. Episodic movies, you know. Um, so Django Fett is a, you know, from a planet called Concord Dawn, and uh, Boba Fett is his clone, made from Concord grape juice from his balls, <laughs> and um. So, what happened was, Concord Dawn was destroyed, you know, a hundred or two years ago, and some war laser, you know, if you take a look here, there's the Concord Great Planet, it was destroyed with a laser, so now there's Concord juice dripping all over in the vicinity, and so in order to escape from the rain, because see what, the remainder of the fetid, you know, fats are living on a moon, they moved over, you know, when the planet was destroyed, you know, tens of thousands of them, and, um, it's all water, but, um, it has a secret volcano moon, or, I mean, it has a secret volcano on it that has a shield over it to make it look like more water, and it, like, resists the constant raining Concord grape juice debris from the planet that was destroyed nearby, but then finally, like, you know, things are getting unstable and, like, there's more volcanic activity and they have to leave that area. So some of the people, then they have to, you know, help rescue the people from that planet, a moon, um, come back with them to their own planet that's a desert. Not many of them want to because they're not used to the desert. So, you know, for various reasons, some of them come back, you know. So we have here um, this botanist, uh, Nuda, you know, that's a good one. She's uh, interested in Hohoba, you know, the dude, the brother of Booba with his daughter Baloba. So she does botany with him, you know. He hooks up with her after his wife died tragically. So then, um, you got all these other, you know, characters vaguely, like, you got a war strategist, uh, DARPA, you know, she, you can just say things that move the plot along and say classic lines about, you know, can't take firepower of that magnitude type stuff. Uh, we've got the reckless surfer soldier, Kahuna. Um, then we have, you know, this, uh, woman who, you know, once dated Django back when he was a stud when he was young. She's like older and she's hubba. She's hubba fat, but you know, she still is hubba hubba. And she has younger twin boys, Duba and Buddha. And one of them, you know, smokes a bunch of weed. And the other one, uh, is really fat. And, um, you know, let's see here. But what really matters here is that we've got uh, old Uncle Bubba, and, uh, you know, he he's really wise, and he remembers all their culture and tells stories, you know, about long-ago times, and talks about how they used to shake their ass and titties, you know, under the stars in long-ago periods and all that stuff. So you can really get some culture going. <laughs> Okay, so in the Star Wars, uh, I think it's the cartoon, apparently there's a r assassin named Reiko who's from the same Concord Dawn planetary system. So uh, he should have a, you know, relative, maybe son, who's named, like like I was saying, Adobe. And, uh, you know, he comes over to the desert planet and he's a, uh, you know, constructionalist, you know. He's an engineer and he... Uh, develops cool buildings and stuff, you know, so you can have some of that, you know, modeling and stuff going on, and show off, you know, upgrades to desert dwellings and stuff, that'd be pretty cool. Have my melons. I'm thinking this is about the size of melons, you know, I got other ones back there, but, you know... Booba Fett, you know?
Now you see this that you're recording? Yeah. This here is what you call a supple sized, you know, plus sized melon, I suppose. You know, it really is taking its time to ripen on the vine, just like, uh, you know, somebody's body. It's about, you know, reaching head sized, you know, but usually at the point where a woman's breasts would reach this size, then her head's grown, hopefully, you know, and she's continuing to enlarge into her adult years, you know? We can really get this size of, you know, standard for movies where the women are supposed to have nice breasts, you know? That's all I'm saying. All right, so I did a story for a picture a long time ago by In Case where there's a, uh, you know, woman who's turning to the dark side with a tentacle plant. It's real sexy. So um, I've been thinking about that, and um, I think how it fits into the new Star Wars movies is when you think about it, um, in the old movies that were the remade ones that are crappy, that everybody says are the major ones, there's the scene where they're in the Death Star, the original one, I guess, the very original, and they slide into the trash vent, and there's a, a rapist tentacle monster in there as the trash is getting squeezed. It makes no sense. And I always felt like that scene, maybe like the original movie, the, that tentacle monster was on a planet, then when they were making their chintzy movies, they just wanted to fit in as much of the same content into their shorter movies. So they just said that monster was in the trash compactor, weirdly. But it got me thinking, why not use that now? Because it's so established and everybody thinks it's the official lore. So what if... Back where the Death Stars are getting made, you know, on whatever moon near a planet like docked near the moon floating there, like the moon has like tentacle creatures on it that always like, you know, slither along the scaffolding somehow at some point while they're making it near the moon and like, then they're like hiding in there. And so what happens is the clones like, you know, they're all mind controlled or whatever to be clones for the, for the empire. So, um, but of course, you know, Nobody ever asks, what What are the clones secretly thinking and talking about? You know, where's that content? Secret life of pet clones. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was... So, um, <laughs> it makes sense for the plot that, um, secretly these, these sexy clone women, now that they've been brought forth and they're dual Death Stars, um, that, like... They have those tentacle plants secretly, and, like, that's how they're, like, turning to the dark side and, like, being super sexy, because they, like, have secret tentacle plants. And they don't realize anyone that they're, like, horny women that are going to take over the Empire, you know? I don't know. Seems like pretty good content, though. So with, you know, face mixing and body mixing technology, what we're doing with, um, Booba Fett Project is all of the clone women... Um, you know, they're all, they would be similar looking, except that they're older now, and, like, they've been growing slower, you know, like, as I said, they split the genetics that way. So, um, they have different types of sexual extreme things going on, so then you can get different women that are sexually different shapes, and then you can match up their body shapes with a little bit of Unreal Engine 5 magic, you know, to... Make them look like they're sort of like they were once all clones that were the same, you know? So I was just looking at this, and it's just like, you know, I was thinking about it, you know? I saw this tomato that was like two and one with one top point, and it just made me think of sexual things. So I was like, hmm, what should it be? So I was thinking like, you know, my whole life I've been trying to reach this ideal where Anything I eat, you know, it's organic, it's clean, and it isn't irradiated in the future. So you eat it, and you don't really need to take a shit anymore because you're, like, um, digesting all the minerals and everything. Body efficiency. Body efficiency, 100%. And the food's 100% clean. So it just made me think, you know, there could be, like, a woman who's got, like, you know... Some sort of C and M and A butt plug in her ass, and she's like super bloated because like she's you know got 
stuff inside of her that regulates her body so she doesn't take a shit, you know? Then they, you know, fill her up with cum or whatever, and she's extra sploogy, you know? Because uh, that's just my ideal scenario I'm working towards here. Um, I'm occasionally going to take a shit, but not all the time. And that's uh, connected to how sexual people can be. Because when you're um, constantly defecating, instead of letting natural processes in your body, you know, microorganisms take care of the process more, you're constantly losing everything you eat, you're going to get worn out and die by the time you're 100. So, yeah, that's just something to think about. So, like I was thinking, you got Jojoba Fett. We got some artwork of him looking all, you know, chadly with smooth skin from being obsessed with being in his, you know, min micro jungle sanctum. Um, so, I was thinking, you know, he should probably already have a daughter. That makes sense. And so, her name should probably be um, Biloba, you know, a like Ginkgo Biloba, you know. So, Biloba Fed, you know, she can be whatever age is appropriate, you know, it's interesting. So, you know, we can have, like, better family drama than everyone's been doing. Like, as though it's always positive, and they're just worried about other people's negativity out in the ever-expanding, you know, bosom universe of the Feds fetish, you know? common booba fett you know has to go out with the big mammary rescue parties because like some stupid you know traitors not traitors traitors or sure traitors too who cares um but anyways point is colonists from other parts of the galaxy keep showing up there and like it's starting to get rainier on the planet in places from terraforming but it's not very quick and like it comes and goes so then people are like dying of dehydration they have to rescue them and then you know she has to show up with her big milky titties and and you know save the orphans who are dehydrated it's the great plot it goes on and on the two sisters um booba fat and luba fat luba fat is the sister who's more aggressive and doesn't <laughs> like strategizing and you know we obviously know what her name means so anyways um she likes to, you know, stalk fresh booty, you know, as she goes out into space warfare areas, you know. So, like, she's always in direct communication through them both wearing their helmets, visors, so that Booba Fett can see what Luba Fett is doing. So, for example, there's the one space mission where some guy's coming through, you know, escaping from wherever with some colonists, and it turns out it's, you know... Boba Fett's, you know, relation from where he came from, some other planet, and he's called, you know, um, well, let me see, what was it called, uh, just a second, of course, it's old Uncle Bubba Fett, you know, coming in, you know, and he, you know, reveals some, uh, re revelations about where Boba Fett came from, from the home planet, you know while he has big lips and but he's not african so it's funny because i say so see what you don't realize one of the factors that makes um boba fett Django fett and then his daughter um booba fett you know so good in combat is their their helmets they have are actually made you know the crystal visor area is feeding energy from like one of those crystals that's from a um, Jedi's lightsaber. So it like gives you pre data like of what people are gonna do and move like right with your energy from your body right into what you're seeing in your visor. So in this case, uh, Booba and her sister. Um, who goes out in space, what happens is their father eventually gets old and, you know, is slain by, you know, some, some, uh, ridiculous scenario, you know, some final assassin, you know, of another competing group trying to control the planet there, you know, like, it needs to be like the last hut, you know, gets his revenge and he's already old and he wasn't fast enough, you know, and his blaster, he was too slow. So then he's like, 
dying. So he tells them to preserve him in that same stuff, you know, that they do on that planet. And then, like, it, it's like this new procedure where it's, like, connected into the brain. So then, like, he's his dying is slowed. And then he's still able to talk to them from his corpse, you know, preserved in the metal. So then he uh, explains to them that they need to return him because he wants to die in his own home system where he came from. He's, he's the only, uh, as far as he knows, true son of Django Fett. Because Django Fett is the guy who took all his sperm and turned them into all the warriors for the Empire, right? And so, um, the two, uh, helmets that the, his daughters have, um, are connected. They have crystals from the same spot, you know, broken in half into the two helmets. So they're able to instantly communicate with their twin telepath energy, like see what each other is seeing. So that's why they're always wearing the helmets. And so one of them goes out in space with their father to return him to the solar system he came from, Concord Dawn. And when she gets there, you know how I hate Avatar concepts, what they've done to Avatar um, and the sequel that's coming out, The Way of Water? They're actually taking, this is relevant, they're taking um, the stupid cigarette smoker scientist woman who was annoying and she gets to be reincarnated on the planet as a baby that one of them has. Okay, and other horrible savage things. So I, as a protest to that, I thought about it this way. He goes back to the planetary system he came from, and it's gets into a little bit of a spiritual aspect here. Like, um, she's communicated with by a secret remnant in the star system that's still living on that secret volcano moon, you know. And there's a tiny army. She's contacted by, you know, DARPA, who, you know, detects that she's in the area. Um, and she comes down to their island planet. And it's explained to her by, uh, you know, old Uncle Bubba's wife, you know, Karma, the seer, that... Um, when Django took all of his energy sperm and turned it into all those soldiers, it, like, drained all of the energy of their solar system. So, they're, like, kind of cursed in multiple ways. <laughs> like, there's just a bunch of women, like, no males can be born. And there's, so those women are kind of stacking up, and they can't really get people to want to live there with them because it's really hard to have children and when they do they're they're female again um so that's caused all kinds of weird society going on around that sexually um so then but when she arrives with um her father's corpse it is the energy of maleness is returned to the solar system as he's ceremonially, you know, put into the sun of the area, you know, and then their mojo returns that was stolen by Django, and they can immediately leave the solar system that they were in, they're no longer ghost trapped there, basically, and so most of the, um, most of the, um, populace goes over to a different solar system on the edge of the area that they are and just lives there because it's a nearby place that's decent, you know, it's boring, whatever. But for various reasons, I have a list of people who go back to, you know, the planet Naboo or whatever it's called. <laughs> I can't even think right now. I've been talking so long. So I got a list of them here and I'll get into them here in a second, but I better stop here. Alright, so what I was thinking was, like, you know how I was saying, um, Django, when he was young, he leaves the solar system he came from and became a soldier of fortune, it says, um, he says. So it seems to me that the way it all started was, you know, 
he uh, had to leave the solar system, he thought, because, you know, he thought, like, you know, there was, like, a drunk guy, and, like, you know, he thought he, like, you know, a tower, he, like, was, like, flying around and, like, blowing up stuff with his fighter jet thing. And, like, blows up a tower, and there was, like, a drunk guy that, like, crushes. So then, like, he thinks, like, he has to leave before anybody finds out what happened. But it was just the stupid drunk guy who could have easily gotten out of the way, but he was uh, too drunk, and he was a moron and on substances and got smashed by the tower, you know. So then, um, the point is... He leaves behind Hubba, who I would play as, uh, I would have be played by Salma. And he goes off and horrible things happen to him out in the galaxy. And meanwhile, Hubba is still there and she gets remarried. And she's always on the verge of, like, she's though she thinks she's pregnant, right? And... The twin boys she's pregnant with, Duba and Buddha, you know, they're like, you know, she's having dreams of their existence, like force, energy, connection, but she can't finish the pregnancy, and, you know, she has a space trader um, husband, you know, Antonio Banderas, and uh, so anyways, the point is, she has had daughters because it's possible for her to have daughters and so she has but it's like as though the energy to have sons is trapped you know so then she has some children she's got um you could have i was thinking you could have let's see zumba you know zumba and yoga those are some good names they're real stretchy, you know, they're pretty hot. Uh, you got uh, Woomba, she has a lot of children, a bunch of daughters. Um, you got Waba, you know, she's extra thick, you know, he's got the biggest titties possible, plus side, you know, Pacific Islander, you know. Um, what I was thinking here was... Um, because I like the plot of uh, reincarnation in a way, you know, that uh, you can, nobody can ever get enough of uh, Boba Fett. So, you know, he definitely needs to be uh, reincarnated, you know, as a child to uh, somebody. I'm, th I'm thinking it through. Hmm. But anyways, I'm looking at my list of uh, names I got here. And so, like, oh, down here in the army section of, you know, from Concord Dawn, the planetary system, you have Fargo, who, uh, expert in transport. You have inventory, uh, and food storage, cargo and amino. Uh, you have Repo, uh, the thief who, uh, because they're, you know, poor and they're a nowhere star system, you know, Tries to steal stuff from passing people, and, and they help him. Uh, then you got LARPA, you know, the fighter, who's expert at dueling um, with sabers and other stuff. And, of course, DARPA, the uh, general army strategist. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Kahuna, you know, the expert reckless soldier who can, you know ride waves and, you know, do crazy stuff. Um, and then the tailor for them, Adorna, who, um, has, you know, has them all decked out in sexy, you know, space wear, like they're an official army, you know, with their, uh, little salvage, um, rocket ship. And, uh, let's see, I better stop here and I'll get, I'll do some more in a minute. All right, here's the scarab beetles that hang on Boba Fett's titties. You see, see that? It's pretty. See that? They're they're little little flying. See there? Okay, there it goes. <laughs> All right. When it comes to big boobs, for 
premium market like softcore porn uh, Star Wars. These I'll use these watermelons from my garden. You see, you got the regular early bloomer type boobs, you know, where they hit, you know, large boob size when they're young. I got those kind of genetics, you know. But see, you got a, a lot of those people, they're, they're a little lazy and they don't work up to, you know, getting the jumbo knockers later. And then there's the people who, it seems to me, as they mature and hit puberty later in their teenage years and peak, those types of people, they can get bigger and bigger like this. But you see, when it comes to the main actresses for Booba Fett, that's not good enough. We need people who keep pushing into their 20s, maybe even 30s, you know, to really develop those mammary glands. So let me show you an example of what we're talking about. So the bounty hunter that originally made all of the clones out of, you know, having sex with uh, one of those aliens on the all-water planet, you know, humanoid ladies, well, he had a mutation, let's say, where he, all of his spermies were like, had, you know, XY chromosomes, so then, like, he'd only have supposedly sons. But then he, you know, gets that split out so that supposedly additional genetic energy can be unlocked for a, for a whole army of clones. So then all the female energy part of the, um, of his spermies is, is put aside into, you know, a separate army of females, you know, for backup. And then... Hence, we enter the era of two Death Stars that, you know, look at first like, you know, they're just, um, how do we explain it? You know, like, if you make sphere cameras where there's, like, sensors at slight, like, geometric angles all around, like an infinite-sided cube, not that infinite, then, like, that's what the Death Star looks like, like it's a, you know, some yeah, sort of sensor hexagons. array, but, you know... Out of hexagons, like yeah. stop signs, whatever, or more complex or less complex, it is, or whatever. I don't know. Oh, okay, yeah, I guess, yeah. Because those are the surfaces. Like, yeah. Sort of. Yeah. So then, you know, when the Death Stars shoot lasers, like the two were like paired, you know, and they gotta like charge up together, and they like, there's like electricity beam that zaps between them, and they charge up, you know, and they blast. And then there's like an energy field around them that all glows and makes it look like nice, like rosy breasts, you know, are all rounded out by gravitron magnetisms or whatever. And then it like shoots the lasers out of the nipple area out of either. Yeah, it's, it's going to be great. Yeah, they're pointy instead of bending. But yeah, the point is this, um, these Death Stars are full of all the female clones and they're uh, real horny because that's fun. And they got, you know, big Booba Fett boobies, and they're going to have to be rescued from their uh, awkward situation. That's all I know. Booba Fett reference images. Got this one. Being pulled through space with cosmic energy. We got the colors collide, the orbs. From deep space, from from the center of the galaxy, they combine.